Okay, Tov, Shalom Aleichem. Good morning and peace be upon you. Today we have May 5, 2014, ER 5, 59.99. Pray you all had a blessed weekend. Had a pretty eventful weekend myself. Uh, got to see Spidey this week. Uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, so that was exciting. Seeing one of my favorite childhood superhero comic book stories come to life on the silver screen. But enough about that. Uh, the promise last week. I'm going to go ahead today and talk about Paul. Um, pretty excited. Don't have really um, a scriptural um, basis for it. As I'm on the road again, time was kind of crucial this morning. So I didn't get an opportunity to really... Uh, prepare a lesson um, this morning and present you this information but um, I'm going to let the spirit lead as I invoke the spirit right now in the spirit of prayer blessed are you Yah mighty one king of the universe the Elohim of Abraham Isaac and Jacob creator of heaven earth sea and all that is in them heavenly father we give you thanks and praises for once again opening the eyes of those who slept and keeping us in the land of the living, restoring us, providing life, health, and strength, and a sound mind to worship you, Heavenly Father, to serve you, to recognize your sovereignty in all that we do. We confess our sins and beg and beseech your mercy as we seek your face, Heavenly Father, and ask that you pardon us and cause us, Heavenly Father, to be restored to you and reconciled in the blood of your your land we thank you for all that you have done and ask that you allow the words that are spoken here today give you praise and uplift you so that your truth may be made known your word may be made known Abba we ask that you just allow your spirit to lead this particular reflection and Open the eyes of those, Heavenly Father, who may not see the truth of your word. We pray these things not because we're worthy, but we ask you to receive our prayers in the name of our high priest, king, rabbi, redeemer, our bridegroom, our prophet, our Mashiach, who is Yahushua, Baruch Hashem, hallelujah, and amen. So, the apostle Paul, Rav Shaul of Tarsus. Truly the most controversial figure in New Testament writings. Uh, his letters, interestingly, have been elevated to a degree of scripture. And it is clear um, with the Council of Jamnia, which took place around 90 in Yavne, that the recognized authoritative scriptures were only in 22 books. The inspired words were only in 22 books. Scrolls, those being Torah, the first five, 17 other books composing the prophets, and a few of the historical books of letters. So you have what they call the Tanakh, which is composed of the Torah, the Law, the Nevi'im, which are the prophets, and the Ketubim, which are the writings. Of those books, what were recognized as authoritative, the true inspired were, again, the Torah and the Nevi'im, the, the Law and the Prophets. Okay? <clears throat> Moshe's writings, Moshe Rabbeinu, and several of the prophets. The New Testament canon or scripture, which was canonized in 325 with the Council of Nicaea and all, and also into some other councils, um, Laodicea, you also have Trent, several other councils, also the Protestant Reformation. Um, these councils uh, also further canonized um, the Protestant text, 
which are the New Testament writings along with the Old Testament writings. But Paul's epistles, his letters, were not considered scripture, as were not the, um, even the gospels, the evangels, so to speak, were not considered scripture. The, uh, this is by Israel. And also um, were not considered scripture were the uh, latter epistles of Kepha, Yaakov, and even the book of Revelation, which is of a literature called apocalyptic literature. Now, Shaul, his teachings, as Kepha wrote in his epistle, are truly weighty and hard to understand, which he goes on to say, those who are untaught in Torah, particularly, because Shaul was well trained in Torah as a Pharisee under Gamaliel was dealing with a people who were not fully aware of the cultural prescriptions that Torah designated for the covenanted people of Israel okay so Shaul's epistles are written in a manner as such where he is not uh, providing a more let's consider this a collegiate level a more collegiate level um, dissertation to the Gentiles okay his letters were more milk-ish not meat-ish they were more introductory and preliminary okay so when you look at the, the Jerusalem Council ruling that Shaul came to uh, Jerusalem and met with Kepha and the bishop of Jerusalem, Yaakov, or James, the brother of Mashiach Yahushua, uh, you see that they are giving the Gentiles a, a preliminary uh, ruling, which is the prescription for salvation from the Noahidic laws, the laws of Noah, okay? So this was the bare minimum requirement for those who were of Gentile origin, who were interested in sojourning with Israel and, 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 and receiving the salvation the Father has provided through um, the new door that had opened in the fulfillment of the sacrificial system with Mashiach Yahushua. Okay. So as Paul is writing these letters to Gentiles, you know, keep in mind again that he was he was particularly reaching out in a fashion that would capture the mind of the people were truly intrigued and wanting to know more and also were also uh, in synagogues these Gentiles that he were dealing with were in synagogues okay already in synagogues and they had received the Ruach HaKodesh they have received the Holy Spirit through belief in Mashiach Yahushua which is circumcision of the heart through circumcision of the heart and and, and repenting and, and, and refraining from the worship of their former gods refraining from fornication they were refraining from eating what is offered to idols what is strangled and eating blood those are the minimum requirements that Shaul was getting the people to understand was needed in order to achieve salvation okay because if you're not um, serving idols you're true you're worshiping the true and living creator okay you're worshiping the true and living creator if you're staying away from idols if you're not fornicating, you're setting apart your temple, your body, to serve the Father to be an acceptable vessel. You're also not eating defiled foods, okay? That would cause your temple to be a desecrated um, space, which will not allow the Spirit to indwell. And so Paul you know, was addressing these issues in the different assemblies that he was um, ministering to and was pretty much responsible for establishing with the Gentile presence. Now, Shaul <clears throat> is a diasporic, 
Yahudi from the tribe of Benjamin. Okay? Crucial to understand this. He had Roman citizenship. He was born in a region of Turkey on the southern seacoast uh, part of Turkey called Tarsus. So he had Roman citizenship as well. Nonetheless, so this, this means he was acquainted with the Gentile customs um, in the diaspora. Though he was not a practicer or a practitioner of Gentile customs in the diaspora, he merely was aware of them. And so being aware of them, being aware of, of, of Hellenism, being a, a, someone who could speak Latin, speak Greek, he was able to meet the people where they were, okay, to bring them to where they should be in Mashiach, okay, so Mashiach was the one who um, supposedly, not supposedly, I would say it's written, he revealed himself to Shaul on his um, journey to Damascus to uh, bring back some individuals who were of the way. And while he encountered Yahushua there, you know, there's two accounts. When you read the book of Acts account, and then you read his account in Galatians 1, one account, the book of Acts written by Luke for a Roman audience, was more akin to... Uh, showed the, the continuity between his ministry and the assembly that was in Jerusalem led by Yaakov or James. Whereas Shaul's account of the revelation of Mashiach in him, as he says in Galatians 1, then goes on to say that he did not meet with anyone but went to the desert of Arabia for three years where he was dealt with only by the spirit of Yahushua. Very interesting accounts in their um, contrasting nature. Now, uh, he then goes on to say he dealt with Kifa after this three-year journey and then met with Yaakov. Kifa taught him for like 15 days, I believe it says, and he met with Yaakov, the, the bishop, the, the leader, the, the, the shepherd of the assembly of the Nazarenes um, after Yahushua. And so there was an agreement that he would go to the Gentiles, okay? And they would take care of Jerusalem and the surrounding areas of, of, of Israel. Whereas Shaul would go to Eurasia and to uh, Major Minor and deal with these assemblies there. And so it's very interesting just to note this. And, uh, you know, they made sure that though he, he, he was observant of Torah. They made sure of that. You know, they tested him in, in, in Acts of the 20, 20th chapter, I believe, and told him to take these all four other brothers with him who were completing their Nazarite vow to show that he is still zealous for the law, that he still kept Torah, which he did, okay? And at bare minimum, he says, you know, he becomes all things to all men, to those who are, you know, with Torah as with Torah, to those who are not with Torah, um, as without Torah, but not without the Torah of Messiah. But you have to understand the Torah of Messiah is the Torah of love, okay? This is the true Torah of Messiah and love. But we again discuss this in another teaching, in another reflection, that the Torah of love is nothing more than keeping the commandments of Yah. Okay, so you are loving Yah with all your heart, soul, and strength. And you're loving your neighbor as yourself. That is the Torah of Messiah. That's what even... Yachanan or John wrote in his epistle about, you know, we give you a new commandment that is to love the brethren. So as Shaul's writing, you have to understand Shaul is really saying, yes, we, we are to fulfill the law. We uphold the law. We complete the law. The goal of the Torah in Romans 10, he says, is Mashiach. So this means that you are to become as well the anointed. You are to be anointed with the same anointing because you are to receive the same spirit that raised Yahushua from the grave within you that will give you new life. So he was talking with these Gentiles about this new way of life that they were to be living. You look in Ephesians 2. He was telling them that at one time, 
You were without the Messiah. You were strangers uh, to the commonwealth of Israel. You know, you did not have any of the promises. But you have been brought near in Mashiach now. And you are now citizens of the household of faith, right? And now members of the promises of the covenant. But also, you know, he was telling them to imitate me, to become as I am. This means to be a fully observant Israelite. Okay, this is the grafting, the engrafting he's talking about in Romans 11. But many times Shaul is looked upon as if all he's saying is, you know, the law is done away with, which is a complete misunderstanding of Paul's writings. The law is not done away with. No kingdom is without a law. No king is without authority. And the authority of the king is based on his law, okay, his word, which are his decrees. And his decrees are clearly established in the Torah of Moshe, even though it's not Moshe's Torah, it's the revelation of Moshe received of the Torah and the interpretive methods or the interpretations of Torah as rendered by Yahushua, okay? So this is what Shaul is really about. Shaul is about introducing two Gentiles the salvation of Yah through Mashiach Yahushua at, at, at minimum, right, with the Noahidic laws, keeping those uh, prescriptions rendered from Jerusalem and Acts 15, but also full inclusion in the covenant of promise, which is why he took Timotheus right after this council was rendered in Acts 15 and had him circumcised in Acts 16, something that's not regularly talked about. But as soon as he uh, had this decision given from the elders and from the bishop of Jerusalem, Yaakov, he went and had his chief disciple circumcised, okay? And Timotheus was a Hellenist Jew. His father was Greek. His mother was a Yehudi. So this is clear when you see it in light of, you know, what's really going on. So, um, man, I mean, all we really need to do is study Torah to really look at Paul's writings. A lot of people, unfortunately, look at Paul's writings. They look at, at, at the rest of the scripture through Paul's writings. And that is a, a, a backwards process or methodology of understanding the scripture. If you don't understand Paul's writings in light of Torah, which he was well versed in and well studied and even carried out and practiced and lived every day of his life, uh, it would be truly um, uh, 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 one wrestling the scriptures or twisting the scriptures to their own destruction. You have to look at Paul's writings in light of Torah, in light of the evolution, because the Gentiles were always to be included in this process as Israel was to forever be the light to the Gentiles, okay? So that role that Paul assumed was one of the promises that the children of Israel were told they would carry out as relating to the Gentiles and, and providing them access to the salvation of the Most High. So it truly is nothing that is like uh, unordinary, it is nothing that is uh, outside of the terms of scripture that had already been laid down and established, but unfortunately they are perceived in a manner of Hellenist interpretation. So Paul's writings could easily be justified by Hellenists to say that there is no more law, it's been nailed to the cross. We don't have to keep these prescriptions anymore. We don't have to obey all these commandments. They're nailed to the cross, particularly Colossians 2, not understanding Paul was dealing with Gentiles who were also dealing with feast days. Gentiles had feast days, and there's more Gentile feasts today in Christendom than there are pretty much anywhere else. Paul knew that these false Sabbaths that these Gentiles kept were not according to the Father's commandments. Why would the father send prophet after prophet telling Israel to return to Torah or face these curses 
all of a sudden just be like, you know what? Forget about it. Y'all don't got to do this anymore. That does not make any logical, coherent sense whatsoever. He would not all of a sudden just be like, you know what? You, never mind. Y'all don't got to do this no more. Israel don't even got to do it, you know? Now, the Gentiles are not, and I had this epiphany this past weekend in a reasoning that I, we had uh, several people. The Gentiles for salvation, for salvation, are not bound to keep all of the Torah. If they receive Mashiach as Yahushua and keep the rulings made at Jerusalem in Acts 15, those are the basics for salvation. The basics. That is basics. But anybody in their right mind who hears Moses read in the synagogue every Sabbath is not going to just, you know what, I'm cool here. If they want to become perfect, as Paul is encouraging them to do, you're going to continue to grow. You're going to graduate. You're going to mature spiritually. You're going to take on more responsibility. Eventually, you may even circumcise yourself and become a full-fledged member of the community to become an Israelite, to be amongst the chosen, okay? And that is what Shaul was encouraging individuals to do. Now, when you're talking about the Judaizers and saying, look, you need to be circumcised for salvation. And when you read that in Acts 15, it says this is what you need to do for salvation. That is not for salvation. Circumcision is of the heart. But we have to understand Shaul in context to Torah. Shaul was an observer of Torah and would by no means whatsoever abandon his cultural heritage. Or even teach Gentiles that this law is irrelevant and is a curse. The curses of the law are from disobeying the law. That is what the curses of the law consist of. So we got to look at Paul in a, in a new way, particularly in the world of Christendom. I mean, I, I don't identify as a Christian, but this is a lesson that I, I or a reflection that I pray those who do identify as Christians truly go and look at and examine and read Paul in light of Torah. So what does that mean? You got to get acquainted with Torah. If you are not acquainted with Torah, you're not going to understand Paul's readings or writings as Peter clearly stated. He clearly stated that. So we got to understand Paul in the right manner. Okay, Paul, Shaul, as even Yahushua called him, Shaul was a Pharisee. He was blameless according to Torah. Right? He was zealous for the law. To the, the point where he thought this new, not new sect, but this sect that had appeared was, you know, heretical and apostatical. An apostate movement. Which is why he persecuted it so strongly. But when he received the understanding of what truly the case was, and he saw it in light of Torah, he understood. He understood, as did many Pharisees. Many of the Pharisees understood, so much so that they considered Yaakov, which was Yahushua's brother, a righteous man. So this community was not completely split. As, as is so commonly thought. Shaul's role, interestingly, was just to go and to minister to the Gentiles. Whereas the indigenous Israelites in Jerusalem prior to 70 were taking care of business at home. So I hope this kind of clears some things up for you all. Again, Israel was always intended to be the light unto the Gentiles, the light unto the nations to be salvation because salvation as Yahushua even says in John 4 to the woman Samarian woman at the well salvation is of the Yehudim it comes through the Yehudim through Israel alright so that's pretty much the reflection for the day I pray these words open your minds edify provide insight 
and all that good stuff. So with that, may y'all bless and keep you. May y'all cause his countenance to shine upon you, be kind to you. May y'all lift up his face unto you and give you peace. Shalom and a hymn and one love.